voltage. So I light our first advent candle, which is purple. And we say, Blessed are you, Sovereign Lord, God of our ancestors. To you be praise and glory forever. You called the patriarchs to live by the light of faith and to journey in the hope of your promised fulfilment. May we be obedient to your call and be ready and watchful to receive your Christ, a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. For you are the light of and our salvation. Blessed be God forever. God of Abraham and Sarah and all the patriarchs of old, you are our father too. Your love is revealed to us in Jesus Christ, son of God and son of David. Help us in preparing to celebrate his birth, to make our hearts ready for your Holy Spirit to make his home among us. We ask this through Jesus Christ, the light who is coming into the world. Lord Jesus, light of the world, born in David's city of Bethlehem, born like him to be a king, be born in our hearts this Christmas time, be king of our lives today. And we sing our first hymn, O come, O come, Emmanuel.
of that day or hour no one knows, only God. Be alert, keep awake. The time is drawing near, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And we come to our time of confession today on this, our first Sunday in Advent. Like a faded dry leaf that the wind blows away, our sins dry us up. Faded and brittle, we are carried off by the wrongs we have done. Yet God loves us still and is able to restore and renew us with the water of life. We say together, God with us, even in Advent, we confess that you can seem far away. You are hidden when we need you near. In our hurt, doubt and fear, we do not try to draw closer to you. Instead, we lash out against you, our neighbour, even those we love. Forgive us, we pray, and come to save us. Let your face shine until our tears are dried, our sins are faded, and our hope is restored. After all, we belong to you, and in your hands we can be made new. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The grace of God given to us in Jesus Christ. The grace of God given to us in Christ Jesus strengthens us to the end so that we may be blameless when Christ comes again. Thanks be to God who is faithful and has called us into fellowship of the Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our prayer for the day. God of power unexpected, we want you to tear open the heavens and come down to make mountains quake, water boil and stars fall until all nations tremble at your presence. But you, you will not perform according to our wants and whims. Instead, you come like the sound of sheer silence, thin, quiet. Instead, you are born among us as an infant. Instead, you show us how love is made perfect in weakness. Instead, you are born among us as an infant. Instead, you show us how love is made perfect in weakness. So we will stay alert, or at least we will try, because we are your people, and there's no other God besides you. Amen. Gracious God, heaven and earth will pass away, but your words will not pass away. Your word stands forever. May our generation be attentive so that by the power of your Holy Spirit, we remember your ways and gladly do right, meeting you wherever and whenever you appear. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now David will bring us our reading. The reading is taken from Genesis 18, 1 to 15, The Three Visitors. The Lord appeared to Abraham near the great trees of Mamre. While he was sitting at the entrance to his tent in the heat of the day, Abraham looked up and he saw three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he hurried from the entrance of his tent to meet them and bowed low to the ground. He said, If I have found favour in your eyes, my Lord, do not pass your servant by. Let a little water be brought and then you may all wash your feet and rest under this tree. Let me get you something to eat so you can be refreshed and then go on your way, now that you have come to your servant. Very well, they answered, do as you say. So Abram hurried into the tent to Sarah. Quick, he said, get three sears of the finest flour and knead it and bake some bread. Then he ran to the herd and selected a choice tender calf and gave it to his servant who hurried to prepare it. He then brought some curds and milk and the calf that had been prepared and set these before them. While they ate, he stood nearby under the tree. Where is your wife, Sarah? They asked him. There in the tent, he said. Then one of them said, I will surely return to you about this time next year and Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Now Sarah was listening at the entrance to the tent, which was behind him. Abraham and Sarah were already very old, and Sarah was past the age of childbearing. So Sarah laughed to herself 
as she thought, after I'm worn out and my Lord is old, will I now have this pleasure? Then the Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh and say, will I really have a child now that I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? I will return to you at the appointed time next year and Sarah will have a son. Sarah was so afraid she lied and said, I did not laugh. But he said, yes, you laughed. Here ends the reading. During Advent, I will be encouraging you to read a book called The Meaning is in the Waiting, The Spirit of Advent by Paula Gooder. We're going to have some Zoom conversations where we share our thoughts on the book. Today, I lit the first of the Advent candles. And that is the one that we light for the patriarchs, Abraham and the patriarchs, the leaders of the church or the leaders of the Jewish church particularly. But Paula Gooder made me think. She talked about the role of the wives in these stories. That it wasn't just about Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, but also Sarah, Rebecca and Rachel. She joined together the patriarchs with the matriarchs. And then she sort of led on that story that we heard and David read, just read to us now. She talked about the three visitors. We often see that picture of Rublev and the three visitors around the table in the little mirror that should reflect our place at the table with the three guests at Abraham's meal. And they give this prophecy that Sarah in a year's time is going to have a child and Sarah is sceptical, she's elderly. We don't know quite how old she is, but she is not a young woman. She has passed her childbearing years. You can imagine her now stood in the kitchen having a good giggle. What do you mean, Abraham, at my age? I don't think so. I can relate to that. I think if God gave me the message now that I was going to have another child, I would be even more skeptical. I would be looking at David and saying, not in a million years is that going to happen. But God is God. And God brings about joy. God is with us. Emmanuel. The story of Abraham and Sarah, of a man and a woman called to leave their family, called to leave their tribe and to go out and to follow on a journey that God has for them is quite striking. They go on an adventure they're not sure what's going to happen to them, but God has made a promise to them. God is taking them away from their family and their friends into the unknown. I wonder how you felt this year as we have all entered into new territory, into the unknown. I wonder how you're feeling now knowing that Christmas is round the corner and it will be far from the Christmas that we're used to. But God is with us. God's call is with us. God accompanies us. He moves with us, even in these changing times. God longs for us to flourish and to grow. God longs for us to become the people, the people that he created us to be. It doesn't always mean that we're going to go somewhere new into a different place, but there are different challenges. 
this year Christmas will be different. It doesn't matter how we envisage it, we know, I know, that my first Christmas here at St Peter's Denemere will not be the sort of Christmas that you're used to. Our numbers will be limited. We don't know yet if we're going to be able to sing at all, but if we are, it's going to be strange and unusual for us. But God is with us, changing and transforming us, making us into the people that he has called us to be. And so I'm going to read a little passage from Genesis 15, those two verses that God says to Abraham. And they will be the start of our Advent journey, the start of our journey together. Do not be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abraham said, O oh Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heirs of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. Have faith. God is with us. At the beginning of this Advent season, have faith. God is journeying with us. And his plans are good. And so may you be blessed this week. And next week, may some of you have got the book and hopefully we can have a conversation about this chapter together, about not being fearful, about God being our shield and our refuge and about the reward that God is going to bring us at the end of our journey, even if it's not a physical journey, even if it's the journey that we go on through COVID and through Christmas and awaiting the vaccination that is to come. I wonder what your questions are when you read the book. I wonder how you would have reacted had you been Sarah or Abraham. But remember God's words, do not be afraid, for God is with us. Amen. Come to our prayers of intercession. As children of God, heirs of the promise, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Loving God, hear our prayers. For the Holy Church of God, that all who have been baptised into Christ may shine like the dawn, bear witness to the good news of Jesus, and light the way of salvation in Jesus' name. Let us pray to the Lord, loving God, hear our prayers. For the nations of the earth, that governments and those in authority may protect the vulnerable, shelter the oppressed, and pursue the way of peace. Let us pray to the Lord, loving God, hear our prayer. For our village here in Delamere, and for all places of human interaction and livelihood, that kindness may abound, compassion prevail, and harmony endure. Let us pray to the Lord, loving God, Hear our prayers. For the planet Earth, our home, that we may honour her gifts, respect her limitations and protect her resources. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving God, hear our prayer. For those troubled with illness, hardship or conflict, that they may receive healing for their bodies release from their burdens and mending of their brokenness. Let us pray to the Lord, loving God, hear our prayer. Hear us, O God, for our eyes have seen your salvation. Let your light shine through us and fill the world with the radiance of your love revealed in Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit reigns in glory. Amen. And we say together the Lord's Prayer. 
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And a prayer of thankfulness. Faithful God, we thank you that Christ is being revealed in every time and place, until he comes again in the fullness of glory. Strengthen our testimony and spiritual gifts. Beware, keep alert, keep awake. God is doing awesome things we do not expect and Christ is coming near with great power and glory and with tenderness and the blessing. May God strengthen us to the end. Christ draw near to our very gates and the Holy Spirit awaken our spirits until with eager longing we greet the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And we sing our final hymn. Lo, he comes with clouds descending. Mm -hmm. 